Smooth and Curly on video. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Smooth and Curly on video. Um, my name is Michael Littman, and uh, with me is Charles Isbell, and we're going to record a series of videos together. Hey, Charles. Hi, Michael. How are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. Good, good, do, good. Do you, want to say, <laughs> do you want to say hi to our, you know, as yet non-existent audience? Hi, as yet non-existent audience. I'm Charles, and I'm here with Michael Littman, and we're going to record a series of things on video about things on video. I thought it would be sort of fun for us to talk about movies for a couple reasons. One is that I wanted to focus on uh, movies that we wanted to watch, <laughs> because yeah. if we're going to spend time on it, we might as well have a good time. And, but movies that people have been talking about in the context of our fields, right? So we're, we're artificial intelligence folks. We have uh, some nice credential. I'm the John P. Inlay Jr. Chair. I'm the Royce Family Professor of Teaching Excellence in Computer Science, because that's what I teach, excellence. <laughs> no, that seems fair. That seems fair. And we've uh, both I'm been a, doing this for a very long time. You much I'm longer a, than I am because you're much older than I am. Uh, I'm at Brown University. You're at Georgia Institute of Technology. Yes, that's Georgia Tech. It is not Georgia Tech University, which for some reason people keep writing down. And Brown is a university, not a color, as many people often get confused. And uh, I'm just a lowly professor, but you're actually the dean of the College of Computing. Yeah, and I'm also a professor, so I'm both a lowly professor. And a <laughs> I see. I see. So you, it wasn't enough that I that I gave you the you know you have a more lofty position than me. You're also like. Yeah, I have that, but I also have your position. So really, you have no business being here whatsoever. But we've been working together for a while. So we, we, we got together at, um, at AT&T Labs. You interviewed for a job. I did, and I, and I remember sitting in your office uh, which, where you had rigged the chair so that it was lower than your chair so that you could look down at me and say, so, justify your existence to me. Great. I mean, this, this, was, this was arguably you know, history's greatest machine learning group, or at least- I think it'd be very difficult to argue otherwise, certainly up to that point. Yeah, tons of things, I mean, including uh, all the boosting work came out of that group. Uh, you could argue the beginning of sort of socially aware um, machine learning, particularly reinforcement learning. A lot of original game theory things came out of that lab. Well, I mean, yeah, if you include people. Jan, who wasn't exactly in our group, but was part of the same lab, uh, you know, deep learning came out. Support vector machines. Support vector machines, that's right. We had tons of things that came out of really that. Really big, influential machine learning idea. We were basically amazing until you showed up and got us all laid off, Michael. <laughs> well, still, you're an impact player. You destroyed the entire lab. So that's pretty good. That was good for you, Michael. Well, I was going to say, and we, we, then later we, we did a class together. So we it started to get a sense that we enjoyed uh, conveying information, but as a, as a team, um, yeah. by kind of bouncing things off of each other. Yeah, that worked out pretty well. So we did that class together. We yeah. did a machine learning class with uh, Udacity and Georgia Tech's, uh, the, the online machine learning and online master's of science in computer science degree, which everyone should take. You can get a full degree from a accredited university, top 10 university for that, matter, for under $10,000. Kind of impressive, really, when you think about it. I think you may have just turned on your advertising voice. I'm, I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, okay, so the title of the of our this new video series is Smooth and Curly on Video. Um, so why Smooth and Curly? Where, what is that from? No. That is the name that our students have nicknamed us from the machine learning courses that we did together. But what was smooth? Why smooth with a V? Well, because I'm smooth with a V. And so the plan is to watch Westworld. Yes. Because Westworld is a movie, except it isn't. But that's okay. Right. It's be maybe better known more recently as a TV series that started in 2016. But I, when I was a kid, and you may have been, I don't know, an embryo or whatever, in 1973, it was a movie with, like, the King and I guy, Yul Brenner. And so I, I distinctly remember wanting to watch the movie and having my parents tell me it was creepy and I should avoid it. But yes, right. So Westworld was important because, I, by the way, I have never seen that movie. I've only seen bits of that movie. Yeah, same uh, thing. Uh, although the bits I saw were pretty, um, pretty creepy. I think your parents were probably right. Um, but yeah, it this, was, there was a little, thing yeah, a little face about. thing comes off. They're like androids that are put together for the pleasure of people. And then they kind of go crazy and revolt or something. That's pretty much all I know about the original movie. Right, and that's really interesting with respect to the kinds of work that we do, because there's a sense in which it's a story that is talking about the potential or the possibility that the, the things we build, these intelligent entities that we're creating, could actually 
take on a life of their own? And then what are the, the ethical and moral uh, implications of something like that? Right. Well, in fact, I think, well, I don't know about you and a lot of other people in the field, but one of the reasons I got excited about the whole idea of doing AI in the first place was to deal with these deep philosophical questions, like what would it mean to actually create intelligent life and what would it mean to see it go out in the world and perhaps exceed um, my own abilities and the abilities of people around me. <clears throat> so now, of course, in most popular culture, that's expressed as a fear, right? That these things will become smarter and better than us and then will eventually destroy us, perhaps through the sky, maybe some kind of net. <laughs> so you're making a Terminator reference. I am making a Terminator reference. You know, it's funny, for the first time, I just realized, so did Terminator just rip off Westworld, except for all the things that are different? I mean, did they all just rip off Asimov? Like, what, is that, what, what does the question even mean? It's all man's inhumanity to man. I learned that in ninth grade English. The answer to all questions is man's inhumanity to man. The that got to what's English. going on in the world is man's inhumanity to man. This is true. This is exactly right. All stories are man's inhumanity to man. So, yeah. So Westworld is good because it kind of captures this, a lot of interesting things that are going on, including a lot of ethical questions and social implications of having machines around us. It, it really is where we are. Even if we don't have intelligent bots running around completely, you know, living in our world with us the way Westworld originally imagined, we are surrounded by lots of really intelligent machines that are listening to us, that are gathering data for us, for, you know, Jan to use and whatever his nefarious schemes are. You know, what happens when you take these intelligent machines and something you didn't recognize in 1973, but you connect them together and you gather data about people and people start living inside them and living with them. What does that do? What does it mean? So yeah, there's lots of really cool questions there, including interesting technical questions. Yeah, and so hopefully we'll, you know, we'll dive into some of that and we'll, we'll see how uh, the, the practice and research of AI kind of connects with the storytelling aspect in the, in the show. Like it's surprising to me that we haven't seen it given that it does seem super relevant. People talk about this sort of thing all the time. Do, do you know why you haven't seen it? I didn't have a uh, subscription to HBO. That was my reason too. That's really interesting. And so that, to me, that raised another question, which is how do you feel about the, the way that video is now made available to people compared to, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 years ago? It's weirder. Oh, it's so much more work. So we, we had like, th when you were growing up, there was like one channel, right? I think <laughs> it was like a small number of channels. And then there became a large number of channels. Um, and you got all this nice specialization. MTV, remember when they used to do music? And you know, you had all these things that are out there and are really good. And then uh, things started to collapse and people like me decided I hate cable. I hate cable so much. And so I went to satellite and then I decided I hated satellite so much. And then streaming happened, that whole network thing happened and everything was going great. I'd be able to look everything at once. TiVo, I remember getting the very first TiVo machine the day it came out and you could record everything you wanted and everything was great. And now we have 475,000 streaming services and all of the convenience has gone away. But it's slowly coming back together as Disney eats everything alive. Um, kind of true. Fighting with Apple, fighting with whatever the other two companies in the world are. And we're slowly, slowly kind of coming back, coming back to just one or two, one or two places again. So as a result, by the way, I now have a subscription to HBO. That's what, okay, that's super interesting. Yeah, I, I discovered that I thought I had access to HBO and it turns out that I was not paying for that, but I was paying $50 a month for live TV through Hulu, something that I don't remember ever wanting and have never used. But that's the thing I, that I'm hating about these million different streaming services is that it's just so easy for money to just like get leaked out and, oh, yeah. and balkanized and stuff. And it's difficult to tell, like where is the money actually going? I just realized a week ago that I forgot to turn off my subscription to GoGo InFlight. So I've been paying three months for being able to get internet on a plane that I have not seen in that three and a half months. You know, this is the longest I've gone without being on an airplane, like since the late 1980s or something. So this is a thing that, you know, one of the ways we stay in touch is that you, you often will text me when you're on an airplane. And it seems like multiple times in a day, you're like, I'm on a plane. So yeah, this is a very different world right now. It's like a West world. Oh, that's very nice, but with planes and texting. I like it. So we're gonna watch Westworld, which 
I know exactly as much about as I told you earlier. But regardless, I now have an excuse to watch it. Uh, so I'll watch it and then talk about it with you. Good. This is excellent. I'm looking forward to it. Are we going to watch anything else besides Westworld? What I was imagining is we each watch an episode and then we come back and talk about it. So there'd be like a one-to-one episodes versus, uh, you know, chats. And if we get through this and we're still interested in chatting, we, there's just tons of other content, as it were, out there that we could, we could use as a jumping off point for thinking about AI and thinking about society. And in the worst case, uh, the video will be available for the um, future robots that come and visit our planet and try to understand what we do.